Welcome to Doc Ben's Micronutrients. In today's episode, let's talk about omega-3. A major question in medical biochemistry or biochemistry a hundred years ago was whether fat is an important or an essential dietary component. So fat was known to be an excellent source of energy and studies were done in the first quarter of the 20th century that demonstrated that lipids or fats contained in dietary fat were necessary for growth and normal physiological function. However, the opinion of leading experts at that time was that fatty acids or fats were not essential nutrients. So this well-established view that fat was not essential was challenged in 1929 by George and Millard Burr, who reported that dietary fatty acid was required to prevent a deficiency disease that occurred in rats fed a fat-free diet. And they concluded that fatty acids were essential nutrients and showed that linoleic acid prevented the disease and is an essential fatty acid. And so, the discovery of essential fatty acids was a paradigm-changing finding and it is now considered to be one of the landmark discoveries in lipid or fat research. So let's look at polyunsaturated fatty acids or PUFAs. The two major classes of PUFAs are omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. Now, like all fatty acids, PUFAs consist of long chains of carbon atoms with a carboxyl group at one end of the chain and a methyl group at the other. So PUFAs are distinguished from saturated and monounsaturated fatty acids by the presence of two or more double bonds between carbons within the fatty acid chain. So now since we know we have something called as PUFAs, what are omega-3 fatty acids that is one of the PUFAs? Omega-3 fatty acids are a family of essential fatty acids that play important roles in a body and provide a number of health benefits. As our body cannot produce them on its own, we must get them from our food that we consume. That is why they are called essential fatty acids. The three most important types of omega-3s are ALA, that's alpha-linolenic acid, DHA, that's docasahexanoic acid, and EPA, or icosapentanoic acid. Now, ALA is mainly found in plants, whereas DHA and EPA occur mostly in animal foods and algae. Now one has to understand that omega-3 and omega-6 fats are used to produce important signaling molecules in the body called eicosanoids. Balancing the intake of these fatty acids, that's omega-3 and omega-6, is considered important for optimal health. Now, omega-3s play important roles in the body as components of the phospholipids that form the structures of cell membranes. Very important. DHA in particular is specially high in the retina, brain and sperm. Now, in addition to their structural role in cell membranes, omega-3s along with a few omega-6s provide energy for the body as well. Eicosanoids or eicosanoids as I mentioned some time back are signaling molecules that have similar chemical structures to the fatty acids from which they are derived. They have a wide range of functions in the body's cardiovascular, pulmonary, immune and endocrine systems. A few words on omega-6. The eicosanoids made from omega-6s 
are generally more potent mediators of inflammation, vasoconstriction that is narrowing of blood vessels, platelet aggregation than those made from omega-3s, although there are some exceptions. Now both classes of fatty acids compete for the same desaturation enzymes. EPA and DHA can compete with arachidonic acid, which is an omega-6, for the synthesis of eicosanoids. Thus, higher concentrations of EPA and DHA, the omega-3s, than arachidonic acid, which is an omega-6, tip the eicosanoid balance towards less inflammatory activity. So what is super, super important is maintaining a balance between these two fats, often termed the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. It is super important for optimal health. What are the omega-3 challenges or what are the clinical manifestations of an imbalance or very low levels of omega-3? If one looks at rheumatoid arthritis, which is an autoimmune challenge, which has or manifests as swollen and painful joints, bone erosion and functional impairment. Omega-3s are able to decrease not only the incidence but also the severity of rheumatoid arthritis. Systemic lupus erythematosus. This is a quite a common autoimmune disorder with diverse clinical manifestations that include inflammation, blood vessel abnormalities and are all associated with autoantibodies of antibodies that attack our own cells and cellular components. Now, there are several papers published that oral supplementation of EPA and DHA, the omega-3s, induce prolonged remission of SLE without any side effects. Type 1 diabetes. Now this is an autoimmune disorder as well. This is not the same as type 2 diabetes mellitus. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disorder. So it's an organ specific autoimmune disease executing autoimmune attacks that lead to the destruction of pancreatic beta cells. So there is a challenge with the secretion of insulin. So there is a, is a glucose imbalance as, as what we see normally. So it is very similar to type 2 diabetes because even that has a glucose imbalance. Now, elevation of omega-3 intake is critical to the prevention and treatment of type 1 diabetes, which should help direct the future clinical intervention with EPA and DHA supplementation. Sarcopenia. The sarcopenia is typically defined as an age-related loss of skeletal muscle strength and mass. It is linked to something called as inflammaging, which means a uh, inflammatory process alongside with the aging process. Omega-3 supplements alone are promising for sarcopenia by improving muscle mass, muscle strength and overall physical performance. Cardiovascular disease. There are plenty of papers on omega-3 and cardiovascular disease. Omega-3 is typically linked with cardiovascular health. So many studies have assessed the effects of omega-3s, primarily EPA and DHA, on cardiovascular disease and cardiovascular disease risk factors, such as high blood pressure and elevated plasma lipids. Now, overall, research indicates that consuming fish and other types of seafood as a part of a balanced diet promotes heart health, especially when the seafood is consume, consumed rather in place of less healthy foods. Alzheimer's disease, dementia and cognitive functions, the, the challenges of aging. 
high intake of omega 3s are associated with a reduced risk of cognitive decline alzheimer's disease and dementia lower levels of dha especially are associated with more cerebral amyloidosis so amyloidosis is a, the kind of a protein deposits that are seen typically in alzheimer's disease depression extremely common isn't it a 2016 meta analysis of 26 studies found a 17% lower risk of depression with a higher fish intake and higher fish intake of course is related to omega 3 so high levels of omega 3 intake may be beneficial for major depressive disorders especially in adults infant health and neurodevelopment Numerous studies have examined the effects of maternal seafood and omega-3 intakes on infant birth weight, length of gestation, visual and cognitive development and other infant health outcomes. Now since high concentrations of DHA are present in the cellular membranes of the brain as well as the retina DHA is very important for fetal growth and development so so is it possible to measure omega 3 yes it is however many clinicians or most clinicians do not assess omega 3 status it is possible to assess omega 3 status via analysis of red blood cells which reflects long term intake of approximately 120 days they're very stable as well the omega 3 index is a test that reflects the content of epa plus dha in red blood cell membranes and this index can be used for assessing tissue levels of epa and dha Here is a rough guideline as to how much omega-3 one requires depending on one's age. Please note that they mention ALA as an omega-3 source as well. ALA, that's alpha linolenic acid, gets converted to DEPA or DHA, but that conversion is abysmal. So, taking EPA and DHA for their anti-inflammatory properties makes more sense than taking an ALA and waiting for it to get converted. So here are some of the natural sources of omega-3. Mackerel for EPA and DHA. Salmon for EPA and DHA. Sardines for EPA and DHA. Flax seeds for ALA chia seeds for ALA walnuts for ALA so omega 3 is also available as supplements they are available as capsules or oils as fish oil or capsules krill oil or capsules cod liver oil or capsules or vegan sources like algal oil or algal oil capsules omega 3s are indispensable 